Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Carib Spice. Today I have a really special guest. He is special because he's my friend, not only a brother in bodybuilding, but I go way back with James. What, 2014? Um, yeah. We met right. in a group, I think. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, that <laughs> Facebook group, it was Physiques of Greatness. Right. So that yeah. was a while back, 2014. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up competing together at my first and only show. Mm -hmm. um and here you are i feel so compelled and i'm so happy you're on my channel um james your success as a coach in the bodybuilding world specifically natural bodybuilding mm -hmm. literally feels like overnight so you know <laughs> i wanted to get on here and just talk with you about coaching your journey so many people ask me hey carib do you know of a coach that i can reach out to and i'm like yeah i have your guy he is about you know, getting you from point A to point B. James, I've seen your athletes. I've seen your um, successes. And honestly, I know you are the best in the bodybuilding community. Um, community. I appreciate so bodybuilding. I'm not just saying that because, because I know you. Um, you do have a very impressive track record. I've never seen someone do what you have done in the, the space of time that you've done it. So thank you for being here and for sharing your story. Um, guys, James is the owner, the CEO and the owner of, um, hard body J Timo. Um, he's a certified nutritionist, nutrition specialist. He's a certified coach. Um, you are the head judge of, so over Texas and Louisiana yeah. of the GBO Federation, the global bodybuilding yeah. organization. Mm -hmm. And that's all I remembered. I mean, there are a lot of you have a lot, you wear a lot of caps. So tell us <laughs> about yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, and just what inspired you to get into this lifestyle? I'm really always interested. What got you started in fitness? Well, first and foremost, Benta, I definitely appreciate the, for the opportunity to even be on your channel. Um, like you said, you we've been friends. I've always admired your work. You know, and um, like I said, when you reached out, it was like a no brainer. Yeah, duh. I'm yeah, I got you. Um, where do I start? Um, honestly, you know, just to, you know, just for the lack of time, honestly, I got into bodybuilding. Well, I've been lifting weights on and off since 2003, um, but I got serious in 2013. 2012 2012 well it'll be 10 years ago this time I got serious it started off as a new year's resolution I wanted to stop smoking cigarettes and stuff like that ah and then you know I got a big head so I wanted my body to catch up to my head <laughs> <laughs> so I started lifting weights or whatever but when I moved to Texas it was like it's 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 different from Cali I'm from California so it's different okay. so you know, I got into the gyms out here and stuff like that. And everybody, you know, a lot of people, because it's a big bodybuilding state. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people compete and they was always, you know, trying to encourage me to compete or whatever. And um, I actually, you know, went to a show and I felt like I could beat these guys. So, you know, then I uh, started prepping for the, the, the physique showdown as we did. So Right, right. So that that was a journey i remembered being on stage i remembered you at the time and then i'm looking at you now as a matter of fact i'm going to i'm going to try to share um one of your i'm going to do a screen share so give me a, a second real okay quick. um are you seeing my screen yes now talk I to see. me about that because the people want to see you you know <laughs> they want to see how legit you are so tell me about the show well, this one, this was actually my pro debut. So, so of course, you know, we competed in the, in the same show. I got fourth in that show. So that lit a fire because I was only supposed to do one show. You know, I just wanted right. to do one show to see if, you know, it could get me into the sport. But right, getting right. fourth place was like, hold on. I'm not about to go out like that. You're better than this, right? Right, right. So then the next show, I went pro. It right, was six right. weeks later, I went pro. And then my pastor actually convinced me to do this show because okay. the guy, the black guy was actually ranked number three in the world. And the oh, white really? guy was, yes. And the white guy was ranked 
ranked number five in the world. And I'm like, <laughs> this some big, this some big fish to fry right here. You know right. what I'm saying? For pro debut. I was I was telling myself, I'm like, I need some time or whatever. And my pastor, like, man, go get that lunch money, man. Go get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Next thing I know. I won my pro debut and this is, wow. this is, I'm ecstatic right here. You know, um, it's a lot behind this show right here. So, wow. you know, wow. so it but was like, yeah. This was very, I remember you sharing this on Instagram as well as, um, you know, Facebook. And I was like, wow, I remember this dude. I remember how you started and then here you are. So I wanted people to see how legit you are, but you know, People see you, they see a competitor, and they have no idea of what it takes to get from point A to point B. Now, when I competed, I was not even going to count that show. Like, I was pregnant. I don't know what I was mm. thinking. I didn't know at the time. And I had a really hard time cutting. But can you kind of tell us what sort of mindset you need to have in order to go from point A and point to point B, um, you know, to be as successful as you are as a bodybuilder? Um, it's mindset. Mm -hmm. it's mindset you have to accept you know because you know this generation has what I like to call toxic positivity ah. <laughs> and you know it, it's one thing to be positive there's nothing wrong with being positive but when pot when that positive mindset gets you to start being delusional as if you're not living in real life that mishaps doesn't happen and stuff like that right that's when positivity kind of like, come on, man, you're, you're in delusion. Right. So it's mindset. You have to accept the, the, the bad with the good, right. you know? And it seems like at us as humans on, in this world, a lot of more bad things happen, right. but it's also how we look at those bad things. We could allow those bad things to be like, Oh, whoa, it's me. Or we could look at those uh, bad things as something to overcome and to look forward to, a, a obstacle to defeat right so it, it all comes down to mindset okay so kind of building on that have you faced like really tough challenges on your body bodybuilding journey i mean i know you off youtube so i know some of your story i'm not sure you know what you're comfortable with sharing on here but can you think back to some challenges that you would have had to like really work through just to even get to this point? Because I think people think this is a very glamorous lifestyle, um, especially when you look at Instagram and those platforms are like, man, this guy looks uh, cut up. You know, he has made it. He has everything going. The clients are there. But have you faced like really tough challenges? And how did you get over those challenges? Um, one challenge one challenge that I had to really overcome because at the time when um when we met excuse me I was doing security right and uh I was working hours upon hours upon hours sometimes 15 16 I've worked a 24 hour shift so trying to prep for a show and having to work long hours like that is like you have to be a special kind of psycho right to actually <laughs> to prep for a show try to get your um you know nap in uh, stuff like that to get you know to recover from your workouts making sure that you diet in properly like it, it was tough that's one obstacle that I look back now and I'd be like man I was really doing 15 to 16 hour shifts and still getting on stage like right <laughs> you know right right and you know I put this picture up I don't know if you can see this picture but I put this yeah, I up because I want people to kind of hear what you're saying and put that with the picture it doesn't this does not happen overnight you really have to commit to a regimen in your diet you really have to pull through some stuff I mean I cannot work 24 hours and go to the gym you know, I think when I was down Houston at that time, we drove all the way back to Dallas and then hit the gym after. And I'm like, I'm not doing that again. Right. But this was something you have been constantly dealing with these long hours of work just to you have a life outside of this life. So I wanted to put this up so people can see. Um, but I know some people are going to be curious about your tattoos as well. So I'm going <laughs> to kind of a little segue if you can talk to us about the tattoos because that is also part of who you are it's part of your identity whether it's past or present people are curious they want to know you know what is you know what does that represent um that was you know before moving to texas um i was i was a gang member yeah. i was a gang member um the tattoos that you guys see um that come i got all my tattoos from prison 
Of course, I'm not proud of it, but by the grace of God, he found it fit to, to pull me out of darkness and pull me into his light. And for me to even be able to operate in bodybuilding as I do, it's like, it's, it's still, it's still surreal. It's yeah. still surreal. Like when people like, like, like you, bitch. So when you reached out, he was like, I didn't know if he was going to say yes. I'm like, what? Excuse me. <laughs> like, I'm not Hollywood. Forget this old tangible You're not Hollywood success yet. Stuff. <laughs> nah, I'm not about to. I look, if, if God said, look, I, <laughs> want to stay humble i'm not going to no i'm still me like i i built my platform off of being me what people see is what they get i'm i'm that's just what it is and uh you know of course i got you you know you want to do an interview? I, I respect and i appreciate that because people don't understand you know they can go back through my youtube videos and see okay we had workout sessions together and all of that but they mm -hmm. don't really understand sometimes you know, we we go back in the sense that, OK, it's more than what you see and see on YouTube. You're also very you know friends with my husband. You have met yeah. Ron before. We have mutual friends. You've met um, one of your successful female clients. You've met yeah, her Kugosh. as a friend through me, a Kugosh, and she has been on my channel as well. So it, there's that connection. Um, I like this picture. You know, it really does show a little bit of the past. It also shows the present. And yeah. it's when I say the present, like the hard work, you can see that hard work and is there. And I honestly don't think that is you at your best. I really think the best is yet to come, but that is just what I believe, right? I don't know, you know, I don't know what your plans are, but you know, James, how did you become so successful in the coaching business? It's like, boom, boom, boom. Everything happened so quickly. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Look at my friend, you know? I feel really proud of you. I feel proud of you in the sense that I know where you started. I know that first show, you were not proud of that position, but that was the fire. And then here you are. So how did you build your business um, so successfully, seemingly overnight? How do you get your clients? You know, I know uh, there's coaches looking at this and they want to know how, how did you even build your clientele? Um, I mean, well, for one, social media. You know, we came in the social media age, pretty much. We 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 was like right in the beginning. So we had those groups. We had Physiques to Greatness. We had a couple of other Facebook groups. This is when Facebook fitness was really popular. So for when we started doing the shows, you know, when we started competing and stuff like that, we had that one vlog together. And it yeah. just pretty much just trickled and it kept going for me. So... Once I, you know, once around my fifth show, I started um, like mingling like that next year, I think 17, the end of 2017 is when I got kind of sick of the judging <laughs> because they was giving, they was giving me, you know, hey, work on your Achilles tendon, work on your back knees, work on your front elbows. Like, what is that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what is that? What am I going to do with that? Like, you, I, you people, are like, petty. people are petty. <laughs> super petty super petty so you don't really have a legitimate reason as to why uh uh i placed here or placed there so right. in, at the end of 27 took the judging test and stuff like that so i looked at it twofold one i would understand judging and number two i would understand the criteria so that i could become a better coach right so i could coach my athletes into you know, whatever division that they're trying to get into without overstepping the criteria. Right. So naturally, I'm in the gyms and stuff like that um, out here in Houston. Um, a lot of people from the gyms I will pull into the groups. You know, we had about what, five figures, almost mm -hmm. six figures, six, right. uh, six figures of people, you know, so it kind of built off that. Um and then God did his thing. Like, it's hard to say. I mean, with my resilience, he already instilled it with me hard work. I, I get yeah. that from my father. I'm coming from a, a long line of men that are hard workers. Right. So I already have that. My mother is a hard worker also. So it's already in me genetically to keep pushing. And right. then by way of how I was raised, I was raised in a very hostile environment to where reputation means everything. So I took that principle and just kept going with it in bodybuilding. And, you know, here we are. It doesn't seem like overnight, but I can see from your perspective how <laughs> it can see like it right. just was like, boom, bam, you know. <laughs> right. 
But, you know, um, so going back to the coaching, because, you know, I know you in, as, an, as an athlete, and then I see your track record as a, you know, as a coach. Um, I know it's not all roses. I know it doesn't always, you know, what can you think back to? No, I'm going to rephrase that question. What is the one thing you struggle with the most regarding your clients? Like, what really gets to you? What irks you? You know, um, some clients can be very, very challenging. Some clients don't want to stick to that plan. They want to do their own thing. They're running off to get second opinions. What is the thing that irks you as a coach? I, I Okay, so I could easily put this on the client. Right. But I'm not. I'm going to reflect that back to me. Okay. The, the, the thing that, re, that irks me about being a coach is that I care so much. Right. And so by me caring so much, I tend to project that on others. I expect me out of everybody else. Right. When in all actuality, I can't. You can't expect you out of everybody. So I care so much. Therefore, when, say, for instance, a client leaves, they go to someone else, they share the meal plan or try to steal the methods and so on and so forth and sell them themselves. Right. I've, I've learned over the years to not so much stop caring so much, but to not allow people being people to affect how I move. Okay. I hear that, you know, I'm an educator um, of all things. I teach chemistry and I always tell my kids, look, when you're doing something, when you go to your next class next year, what well, all that you've learned in my lab is a reflection of me as well. So I hear that, you know, it's that passion and whatever people do, whenever they associate with you, it's a reflection of who you are. So I hear that a lot. Um, James, you're married. Yes. <laughs> this is my last question. I'm married. <laughs> you're married. You're your dad, your father. Um, you are a husband. You're a coach. You have so many um different roles to play how do you find that work-life balance you know because some people will tell you that they would not pursue something because they don't have the time how do you do it how do you make the time that's a lot that's a lot um, of content. well I, I really can't take all the credit there um just having a spouse supports makes it a lot easier yeah because in order to be great in any walk of life, it takes some form of selfishness. You're, you're gonna, it's gonna be a lot of time where people are gonna feel neglected, right. you know? But you have to find that balance. You have to really be organized with your time. You know, keep a calendar. And, and I'm old school, so I'm a right. Forget all this electronic <laughs> stuff. Don't feel bad. I, I'm, I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna write even with my client. I have so many of these different books <laughs> of all notes from weights and all kind of stuff. When you I know, I could, you. Use, I could use, easily use a PowerPoint. But I'm really, taking notes as well. Right. I see? Use my phone. I'm writing pen on paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have you know, but it's like being intentional about making time. Right. Being intentional, taking that time off. Okay, I got this day off. I got this window. Let me see if I can schedule this with the kids and the wife, you know. So, and then it helps a hundred percent because she's uh supportive. About and I know she's I also in fitness, you know. I am also on her mm -hmm. Instagram page, and it's really you know, I love seeing couples do things like that together. Um, is that filtering a little bit to your kids? Are they getting into the whole fit fitness as well? Mm. No. <laughs> mm, you know, I mean, I they eat very well. I, I can say that they didn't, you know, of course they kids, so they're gonna want their junk, but they <laughs> eat they eat well and they want that type of food they don't it's not like i'm forcing them to eat it i don't have to force them so you know but nah they they when they see me compete and stuff like that of course they mimic the posing but you know <laughs> <laughs> outside of that nah they, not not yet at least i don't see it okay i mean miss abney you know my first daughter she she actually five minutes ago did her little routine i don't tell her she changes into her little workout clothes and she goes to her yoga and a little weightlifting and that is just Miss Abney but you know we're the thing is our kids are going to look at us and um I'm just always curious about people's kids following into in their footsteps so 
you know, I really appreciate you being on here. I don't want to take much of your time. Um, I'm really happy I got to talk to you because I was, I was like, you know what, I'm going to reach out to him. And if you're busy, I get it. But this is not the last time you're going to be on here. You're going you're gonna to come back. Yeah, I'll come back. Probably do a panel or something like that and talk about fitness just a little bit more. But um, I'm definitely going to put your information at the bottom. Guys, if you are looking for a coach, a coach who knows what he's doing, a coach who is about, you know, the nutrition, the coach who is just, you're, he's not going to play. You don't play games. <laughs> you don't <laughs> play games. Um, check out his information online. That is just the best thing I can tell you. And um, you have nothing in losing, um, you know, by just reaching out to him. Uh, James, is there any other thing you want to share? Last words? potential clients, people trying to pursue coaching, um, especially during the pandemic as well. I don't know how you do this, but any last words you want to share? Um, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Um, to those that are, you know, that are looking to become a coach, a trainer, you know, just be resilient, be patient. Do know that businesses are rarely successful in the first year in the second year in the third year in the fourth year you know you just gotta be stay consistent keep going keep going you will have your big break and i'm only saying this is because someone said this to me understand i i bust my butt (laughs) i would do 15 hour shifts and then in between 15 hour shifts just being transparent if a client wanted to um wanted me to train them <laughs> i'll ease off from the post and go train them I, it just being transparent it's it's you you have to do what you got to do yeah. getting off work going to go train a client and so on and so forth hey, getting my workouts in there's many plenty of cold meals that i've eaten just to get ready for shows because there's no microwaves on my posts right. it I is what it is it. just and keep I, going I see- Dearly appreciate you being so transparent. Um, guys, that is all I have. This is definitely not going to be the last time you see James on my channel. Well, this is not even the first time. We have done vlogs before. But um, right. definitely check out the description and um, check out his information. Until next time, guys. Peace and take care. Bye. <laughs>